Introducing Ectolife, the world's first artificial womb facility, powered entirely by renewable energy. So this futuristic video called Ectolife, displaying what seems to be some sort of artificial womb facility that can make 30,000 babies a year, turns out to not be real. Every pod is designed to replicate the exact conditions that exist inside the mother's uterus. A single building can incubate up to 30,000 lab-grown babies per year. Ectolife allows your baby to develop in an infection-free environment. The pods are made of materials that prevent germs from sticking to their surfaces. According to the video creator, it's a fictional concept, but he apparently believes this technology will be ready and could be seen in as little as 10 years. To those who are freaking out about it thinking it's real, it's not, it's fictional, it is videographic created, and it is not an actual occurrence. But could it really be? Could they really take it this far? We'll talk about it on today's live stream. Thanks for joining me. The show starts now. It's the Dream Rare Podcast. Welcome to the show. The way to get the news at the desk or on the road. Let's go. God is great and success in our control. The world is crazy, but we get better from obstacles. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thanks for joining me today. So I wanted to cover this viral video. It went viral a couple of weeks ago, but probably like a dozen people sent it to me and said, Anomaly, you got to cover this. This is scary. Look what they're doing. They created some sort of artificial womb facility to make 30,000 babies a month. So I looked into it. I saw the video. It's very creepy. But after a little bit of research, I found out that it's actually not real. It's a simulation. It's just, um, I don't know if AI would be the right word, but some sort of video illustration of what could possibly be. And it's not actually real. So you don't have to freak out about it and uh, think that they're like harvesting babies somewhere. I mean, they might be doing something similar. I don't know, but I'll play a little clip of it again. And then uh, we're going to just talk about what they're saying in the press about how it's not real, but how possibly one day it could be real. And then I want to talk about Prince Harry afterwards because he just sounds like a loser and it's funny and I need to entertain myself. So let's watch just a little clip of this. Um, another one. Life growth pods feature internal speakers that play a wide range of words and music to your baby. Through the app, you can choose the playlist that your baby listens to. You can also directly sing to your baby and make them familiar with your voice before birth. Our goal is to provide you with an intelligent offspring that truly reflects your smart choices. So you can watch the full video if you YouTube it. It's called Ecto Life, and it's like an eight-minute video just kind of showing a simulation of growth facility womb pods or something. I just want to read a little bit from a Huffington Post article just about you know how it's not real but how they're anticipating that it possibly could be. So uh, the futuristic video that's being widely shared on social media is the brainchild of Hashem Al-Ghali, a producer and filmmaker with a background in molecular biology. On his website, Al Galali says uh, he, he has a background in science and technology. To, he uses that to develop new concepts. He speaks of imagining the future, though some online clearly have mistaken his film as real. In the video for a fictional facility called Ectolife, we hear that artificial wombs could provide a solution for cancer patients who have had their uteruses removed that then could reduce pregnancy complications and the pods will help countries experiencing population declines such as Japan. Bulgaria, and South Korea. Hashem, the creator of the video, believes this technology is ready and we could see the facilities in as early as 10 years. So he says it's not real, but it's his brainchild and he thinks we'll see it within 10 years. What do you think? Personally, I think sometimes they put stuff out like this to scare us. I'm not saying this guy did, but you know, on the other hand, technology has increased, so it's not that crazy to think that they might try to do something like that. Let's read on from this article because there's some interesting uh, other perspective. Professor Joyce Harper, the head of reproductive science and society group at UCL Institute for Women's Health, believes we might. I have no doubt that at some point most people will be produced by IVF and that is ectolife and ectolife would be a possibility in science. I think you should never say never. If you think of just the last 50 years of what we achieved, we'd never have thought of it. I'm quite old, so I remember watching Star Trek where they were doing video calls. And, you know, I never thought I'd be video FaceTiming my children. So, I mean, she brings up a valid point. FaceTime was once some sort of artificial concept from the future. And now everybody FaceTimes and they don't think twice about it. So 
you know, just providing the news here. Uh, a lot of people were scared thinking that they were already doing that. It looks like it's a uh, just a concept video. With that being said, is it possible? Will they go that route? Uh, possibly. I'll just say this before I move on to the Prince Harry stuff, because I, I have to talk about Prince Harry, not because it's that important, but it's just funny and I want to laugh at him and at myself. Uh, but, you know, even with Neuralink, Elon Musk's, uh, I would say, company to plant computer chips in human brains, he says he's moving on to human trials this year. On one hand, I think that it's very possible that it's happening because technology does advance and someone's going to do that. On another hand, you know, sometimes I do feel like it's this dangling carrot in front of our face that never comes like the moon landing where they're like, we're going to go back to the moon in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, 70 years. You know, Richard Branson is going to send people around. I'm not saying they're not doing something, but it does seem like they never actually get there. And yes, AI is rapidly advancing. Yes, technology is going to advance. Yes, they're going to be able to do futuristic stuff with kids. I'm not saying that technology is frozen. It's just I don't. I don't like to be afraid of the future either way. So I don't know if they're ever really going to do stuff like that, but I wouldn't rule it out. At the same time, I wouldn't buy into the fear. You know, life is going to move on. Things are going to get crazy. And hopefully God has us here playing our role. Now, I want to do a few Prince Harry stories before I leave, and I want to keep this video pretty short. Last ones have been two hours. This one's going to be under 15 minutes. This is just like a humorous second uh, story. I'm just going to read a few headlines from Prince Harry because he's out saying, I did cocaine. I killed 25 Afghanistan people. I was bigoted before I met my wife. It's like, I guess he's just trying to sell his book and I guess it's slightly working. I don't know how many people are buying it. TMZ reported, I was probably bigoted and racist before Megan. He said, probably. Yeah, I guess he doesn't know if he was racist or not. So he's going probably. Prince Harry says he was probably bigoted and racist before he went, he met Megan Markle. Uh, you know, Harry told Anderson Cooper, I had no idea the British press were so bigoted. Hell, I was probably bigoted before my relationship with Meghan. Well, it's just so odd. Like, you know, here at the Anomaly Show on the Dream Rare podcast, we love we love all ethnic groups of people. But it's like sometimes the lightest skinned people are acting like they're Usain Bolt, you know, left in a in a, you know, tanning salon for too long. It's like, how come like it's like Sean King, Meghan Markle, you know, they, they're going to tell you what it's like to be so dark. And it's like, yeah, um, I was going to say something about Valerie Jarrett, but, you know, my friend Roseanne already got canceled for that. I was going to say Meghan Markle makes Valerie Jarrett look like Usain Bolt. I don't know if that's a good joke or appropriate, but it's too late. I, I just said it. It's funny in my head. Um, I don't know. Uh, congratulations that now you know better or something. He also said that he claims that he killed 25 like Taliban people in Afghanistan while he was serving in the military. Maybe he really killed 25 people. I don't know. Some people said he was in a helicopter unit. I just don't see it. I don't even think he could kill a gopher in his garden. But, you know, maybe he really was like a badass. I'm just I just don't believe it. I feel like he's lying. I don't know. But maybe he's not. And then he also said he admits he took cocaine. It's just like, whatever, dude. I just see him popping up. It's like, I did cocaine. I killed Afghanistan. I was racist. It's like, can we deport this guy back to wherever he's from, Great Britain? They're so cringe. They're like, oh, the, the paparazzi is all after us. And I, I don't like paparazzi. I think they're creepy. But you didn't have to move to Los Angeles. You know, it's not like it's not like they're following you. It's like you're following them. You're following the cameras and then being like, what? Why are why are they all in Los Angeles? Like you're not even from Los Angeles. If you're from Los Angeles and you live there, and then it's like, yeah, you know, leave those people alone. But you're going towards the cameras and being like, why are they following us? You could easily move in some suburbs of uh, Great Britain and nobody would care. But good luck selling your book and telling people you killed a bunch of people and whatever you're going for. I just thought it was like remotely funny enough to talk about. And I'm just bored of all the negative press. Well, that's the show for today. I'm going to keep it pretty short. I might do another one of some other stuff. There's the drama in the house going on. What do you guys think of that? There's a lot of people taking a hardline stance in the house of, uh, what is it, representatives in the United States of America. There's a lot of people caving and now they're voting for Kevin McCarthy. Personally, this is just my take before I leave. Um, you know, at a certain point, I think it's smart to use that as leverage to try to get some stuff out of it. 
So I personally wouldn't say people like Anna Paulina and Chip Roy and even Paul Gosar, they're now voting for McCarthy. I don't look at it like they're caving. You know, I just look at it like maybe they got something out of it and, you know, they're going to hold him somewhat accountable. I understand why people are upset, but I don't know. I think it's a smart move personally. If you could get leverage, use some sort of caucus or group to say, hey, we're not going to vote for you until you do this, this, this and this, make them sign it or try to hold them accountable. But, you know, other people just want to drag this out forever and I guess just never vote for them. I see both sides of it. I, I guess I'm just not that upset at the people that possibly struck a deal, but some are. Uh, I don't care really that much either way. I guess my expectations are pretty low uh, for either McCarthy or not. I don't really have high expectations for these people, but maybe they'll shock and surprise me uh, this year. One more story that is somewhat newsworthy that I think is kind of funny is, uh, I don't know if you guys know David Icke. David Icke was banned from Twitter, probably Facebook. He's known as a conspiracy theorist, and he said some things about COVID that got him kicked off of everything. Well, apparently David Icke's been brought back onto Twitter. Uh, he has a Twitter account for the first time in a long time. Same with General Flynn. A few other people are being brought back. And the first thing that David does when he gets back to Twitter is says he wouldn't trust Elon Musk to tell him what time it is in a room full of broken or in a room full of clocks. So I just thought it was funny that the first thing he does when he gets back to Twitter is just crap on Elon Musk and be like, yeah, I don't trust this guy. Pretty, pretty, pretty epic kind of, you know, doesn't care. Not even going to thank Elon for bringing him back. Just just straight off, uh, you know, criticizing him and telling people that he doesn't trust his agenda. I mean, it's kind of legendary. I, I think that's pretty cool. David X a legend. So Appreciate you guys. I'm going to keep it short for today. This is one that's easily watchable and shareable. The main story is Ectolife got viral. Lots of people messaged me over the last couple of weeks. I just want to let people know it's not real. It's just a simulation and a creation from a video producer. So they're not actually doing that according to my knowledge, but possibly in the future, maybe they could, but don't freak out about it thinking they're, they're doing that. It's not happening. Uh, just a video, but with science, with where everything's going in technology, I guess you could never rule anything out. Just don't be afraid of it. That's my only advice. I don't like to give unsolicited advice, but there's always something to be scared about. And people message me all the time. Most people are cool. Don't get, get I'm so grateful that people even care about me. But in general, sometimes people are freaking out all the time. Like I got a whole, I'm just going to let you guys know on Instagram, I have a whole general section of like hundreds of people that I never answer anymore. And it's not because I don't like you, but it's like people that send me stuff every day and they're freaking out all the time. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my God. And it's like, listen, life is crazy. It's always been crazy. It's, it's going to be crazy. I'm not saying that you can't look at the news, but if you're freaking out all the time, maybe it's time to take a break and try to find somebody that presents the news in a calmer way. Because there's no real benefit to being afraid and freaking out like every day. It's like, oh my God, they're doing Ectolife. Oh my God, they're doing Neuralink. Oh my God, they're starting this war. Oh my gosh, she's doing this. Oh my gosh, oh my God. It's like, I put them in the general section. I'm like, you're freaking me out. You know, I, I talk about the news every day and it's not ideal every day. But, you know, there's this meme that I like. It says, can you do something about it? Then do something about it. If you can't do something about it, you can't worry about it. There's no strategic advantage. So just promise me that you're not going to freak yourself out. You know, consume the news, look at all the stuff, but don't don't let it drive you crazy because there's plenty more crazy news coming. So if you get crazy over this, I'm sure it's only going to get weirder. Uh, God bless you guys. Appreciate you. Have a beautiful day. And